In this edition of Unboxing with a Rocket Scientist, we're going to take a look at the Estes Saturn V Limited Edition Skylab rocket. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist's opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today we're going to look at the Estes Skylab limited edition rocket. The Skylab was America's first space station and it was launched, and it says down here at the bottom, May 14, 1973. This was long before the International Space Station was in orbit. Um, and it was flown on top of a Saturn V rocket. Um, so normally on a Saturn V from about here up was the crewed portion, but to put this space station into orbit, they just replaced that top part with the space station itself. Uh, now I have actually looked at the contents of this box, so full disclosure. Um, in fact, I've actually gone ahead and started building one. Now I haven't painted it yet, um, but I wanted to get a feel for the components as I go through them in the box with you. So, first of all, we, you know, as you could see here, it was a nice four color box and you got a nice corrugated inside box to protect everything nice and strong. And you can kind of see all the different parts that are in here. Uh, the big obvious ones are the uh, body tubes and we have three body tubes. This is the main body tube and now this is a very lightweight, I think it's a BT-101 was what they used to call it. It's about four inches in diameter. Um, and it's soft and flexible, but once you get the rocket together, it's not so bad. So don't worry about that. Um, inside of this tube is a high power uh, 29 millimeter tube. Now this is a thick wall tube, so this could take F's and G's. I don't know if I'd fly it on an H, but I'm sure some people would try because an H motor will fit in there. Um, this is a thick walled tube, 29 millimeters. So this is not gonna fly in Estes D motors. You're gonna need the Estes F or the Aerotech or Cesaroni composite motors. And there's a wide variety of motors that this can fly on because it has a 29 millimeter motor. So you don't think you're limited to just Estes engines. You can do a lot of crazy things with other rocket engines. Uh, this tube is also a thin wall tube and this is the Skylab portion, the upper stage portion. Um, also in the kit are these two centering rings. Now one of them is for the shoulder on the back part of the rocket, which is right here. And then the other one is a reinforcement ring that goes inside of here. Now they are very similar and they are the same diameter. Um, so you kind of have to decide which is which and use the taller one for the shoulder portion down here. Um, the instructions are a little bit vague. See, as I, I told you, I built it, so I, I know a little bit about it. Um, this is the nose cone on the rocket, and it's a blow molded polystyrene. Um, I really like it because it has a lot of the details already molded in there, um, so you don't have to actually add them onto the outside of the rocket. Let me just put this back here because I know I'm going to grab that later. Uh, you got another tube inside. This is a spacer ring to hold the, the nozzles in the rocket. The nozzles are display, so this pulls out with the nozzles. Uh, let me, the, a lot of this stuff is going to fall off. <laughs> I know it's going to happen because there's a lot of parts in here. Uh, in here, I had a knife. Our, our vacuform pieces. Now, vacuform is a way of making plastic parts and Estes does a really good job on these. I have no complaints about the vacuum form parts. Um, the detail on these things is really nice and it's really crisp. Um, it is thin plastic so you do have to use a little bit of caution putting it together. Um, and then you have all these wraps which go around the outside of the rocket and gives it all the nice surface detail. I really love all the gingerbread on this rocket. Um, so here's the fairings on the bottom. Here's the thrust structure wrap, um, the second stage wrap, 
that transition, which is this one. This is the bottom wrap at the very bottom of the rocket. And this is the Skylab vehicle itself. Um, they did something really unique on here, which I, I'm really impressed. Um, there's going to be other details. These are in, uh, injection molded parts, and that's in this bag. Um, these are the tunnels, and these are uh, injection molded, but you do have to cut these to length. So they give you extra, uh, so you can kind of play around with it to get your cutting down properly. Um, those go here on the side of the rocket um, between the vacuform panels. Uh, but on this particular vacuform wrap, you have these pieces right here, and they get glued right on there like that. And they, they put raised details that capture on the inside of here, uh, and that is really nice. So you know exactly where they go on the rocket because they only fit one way. Um, so I really like that feature. That was really nice. Um, also in the kit are the plastic fins and these are also injection molded, which means um, they are really highly detailed. And in this case, they're very, very shiny. Um, so when you go to paint them, you don't have to do any sanding on these at all. And there are two parts and you just use plastic model cement and you glue them together and that will make up your fin. Now there is one small problem that I have with these and maybe I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, inside of here are all the flat pieces. Um, like your centering rings. Um, let me take that apart. So first we have here are water slide decals and this kind of protects them. So these are nice uh, four color water slide decals. This just usually does a really good job on those. Um, these are, oh, they give you this nice little tool right here to make sure that your fins are nice and straight. And if you know me, for my previous videos, I always love it when manufacturers include tools to help you align things and make th things straight and strong. And so they do give you that. Um, these here are, they go on the bottom and they go inside of these uh, vacuum form pieces because these are somewhat flexible and that makes them nice and strong on the base. Uh, and they're laser cut, so that's also really nice. Um, here's our transition and our shock cord anchors. Um, nothing fancy about this. It goes together really nice. Let me put that in there. These are the centering rings and these are laser cut also. They have two sheets of them. This is one that had me a little bit confused because when you feel them, one of them is using thicker cardboard than the other. And I don't know why they chose to do that. I would have made them using the same thickness. These rings right here um, they go inside of here, inside of this section. Um, and because they're thinner, I had a little bit of harder time dealing with them because they're thinner. I, I wish they would have used the thicker stuff, but they are usable and it makes a lighter weight rocket. Uh, here are the instructions. Um, the instructions, Estes in general does a really good job and they're nice and detailed. Lots of lots of illustrations. Um, to help you, although there are some places where they are a little bit vague. Like I was saying, you know, the, the rings, they don't tell you to use the longer one as the uh, shoulder on the, on the forward part. Um, but overall, they're, they're pretty good instructions. Uh, also in here, we have the plastic display nozzles. I kind of talked about them before. Now these are for decoration. They don't fly with the rocket. Um, they, they are removable when you put the rocket motor in. Uh, as you can see, these are also two-part pieces and they'll glue together. All this stuff will come off. Um, these are really nicely done as well. Injection mold, you know, you can't go too wrong with injection mold parts. That's really the way to go with, if you want a lot of detail. Uh, and then the final bag inside of here is all of our small bits. Okay, so we have one, two, three different parachutes. Um, and these are poly, polyethylene plastic. Um, I can feel, they feel different. So this is bigger than this one. I just lost my hobby knife blade. <laughs> um, 
So this is you know, just your, your typical plastic parachute. Um, you do get a engine retainer, a plastic engine retainer. Um, for 29 millimeter and bigger, this is the way you go for rocketry. Um, you don't use the engine hook anymore and you don't get an engine block anymore because the engine block is actually built into the rocket motor. So don't freak out when you don't see an engine hook or an engine block. Um, and then in this bag we have our rubber shock cords. These are your traditional Estes rubber shock cords. If you ever built one before, you know they're nice and stretchy, just kind of like rubber. Um, and then in this bag, I wish I had my knife. I want to open it up. Found a razor blade. Uh, okay, so then in this bag, we have injection molded launch lugs. Um, this is quarter inch in diameter, so this is going to fly off of a bigger launch pad, not your little Estes Porta pad. This will fly off of a quarter inch launch rod. And you want a long launch rod as possible. Um, you can get a, a launch rod for five feet, maybe six feet long, which is great. Um, and then you got a lot of clay for the nose weight because this rocket, um, you're going to have a bigger, heavier motor in the back because it's a 29 millimeter. So you're going to need no more nose weight in the front. Uh, and that's going to be rolled into a snake and shoved in into the front of this. Make sure you put it all in. Um, because you got to make sure that this rocket is stable because it's bigger rocket on a smaller motor It could lumber into the sky and we want it to get it fast and stable uh, and then you also have um, String for your parachutes that's right there and then also these are the rings that go on your parachutes and then finally we have um, your warranty sheet in multiple languages in case you're not in in an english speaking country so that's pretty much the kit um like i do like this kit i do recommend it um, it does have some flaws one of the flaws that i found was the fins that i was talking about them before um, they have to be put through these fairings right here um, so you have to cut out a slot so that the fins can slide through the fairings. Um, on the Apogee Saturn V, now our Saturn V is five feet tall, so it's quite a bit bigger than that. Uh, we use similar vacuform wraps, but we made our fins different so that there's just a tab that goes through. Um, and these you have to create a slot that is the shape of the fin. And instead of being just a simple rectangle, cutting a simple rectangle is much easier than trying to cut these. And the problem that I have is that on my, and I know you can't see this is because this is very small, but I have gaps between my um, fairings and my fins that now I gotta fill. Um, so that you have to watch out for it's really unavoidable. You're going to have gaps. Um, I do have a technique on how to fix those gaps. If you come to the Apogee website and go to our section on advanced construction videos, I'll have a video there on how to fix that so that when you build your rocket, um, there's no gaps. It's nice and strong. Um, in fact, what I'm going to show you is going to make them a lot stronger. And it doesn't add a lot of weight. A little bit of weight, but not a lot of weight. So, this is the Estes Saturn V, the limited edition Skylab version. I hope they don't make it limited edition. I hope they keep producing it, but they always start out as limited edition to see how they sell. So go out and buy one. If you don't have a place, um, come to the Apogee website, because we have them. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. My name again is Tim Van Milligan. This has been unboxing the Saturn V with a rocket scientist, that's me. And until the next time, go out and have a great day.